It's my pleasure to introduce you Kevin and Luke Borsario. Kevin and his wife Katie have lived on Haida Gwaii for the past 25 years where they raised their three children. Kevin works as a community linguist with Haida elders at the Skidigat Haida Immersion Program and is a fluent speaker of the Haida language. Haida born Haida Gwaii born and raised Luke Borsario started kayaking and kayak surfing at a very early age and has paddled all along the Pacific coast. From surfing and kayaking in Mexico and Guatemala to paddling across the Hecate Strait and leading ocean kayak tours in Haida Gwaii, Luke's passion for the waves and for adventure has taken him both far afield and into the misty islands of his hometown. So our presentation tonight is just about our kayak trip that we did. Uh, we completely circumnavigated Guayanas and also did um, the entire west coast of Moresby Island. <coughs> Our trip started out in Queen Charlotte City and ended at Moresby Camp on the east uh, coast of Moresby Island. It took 15 days to complete and at the end we had covered 325 kilometers with an average of seven hours of paddling each day. Kayaking in Guayanas, especially on the west coast, it's of utmost importance to make sure that you have the proper um, gear, training and experience in order to do your trip. <clears throat> Sorry. Although many of the pictures that you see here tonight are of sort of calm waters and <coughs> blue skies, you have to remember that 95% of the pictures that you'll see here tonight were taken 5% of the time. So you don't really want to take your hand off your paddle and start taking pictures when you're kayaking some days, that's for sure. Uh, during our time on the west coast, we are dealing daily with up to five or even six meter seas, complete fog whiteouts, high winds, rebound waves, and capping seas. And so I'm just going to give you an example of a typical day that we spent while kayaking on the west coast of Guayanas. So 4 a.m., wake up. 4.30 a.m., you got to think, we're paddling in kayaks, so we don't have a whole lot of room for food. So for breakfast, every morning for 15 days, we had pre-packaged oatmeal. And after paddling and eating oatmeal every morning, it got terrible. So anyway, sorry. 4.30 a.m., forced down oatmeal mush breakfast in the dark. 5 a.m. begin breakdown of camp by headlamp. 6 a.m. we would load our boats for a 6.30 uh, a.m. launch. We would then pull out of the bay and into open fog and ocean. Our first hour of paddling we would spend trying to judge our distance um, as opposed to our speed and this we would use for the rest of the day for rough navigational purposes. Um, other things we would use would be the sun. We would sort of see where it is in the sky and use that and but this was only if we could see the sun because we did deal with a lot of fog. Um, other things would be sound and sight of shore breakers, rebound wave direction, ground swell direction and we also had compass and maps. We did have a GPS but it was not turned on once so we relied not for one minute on any electronical devices. So I had the opportunity to see some amazing navigation. It's pretty Cool. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, after sort of figuring out where we were, how fast we were going, we would paddle for the most of the rest of the day, white knuckle paddling. By white knuckle paddling, I mean sort of gripping and paddling. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we would usually find a camp spot around two or three in the afternoon. We'd have an early dinner and early to bed, and then wake up the next morning at 4 a.m. Weather changes can be intensely abrupt on the west side, and I often feel like when I'm paddling, and this is a good shot too, that your head is like an owl head and it just moves 360 degrees continuously when you're paddling, uh, looking out for the sea and the, and the wind and the, the sea, um, or the, the sky, what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, camping uh, in Guayanas, especially on the west coast, is something to take into serious consideration when you are planning a trip. Um, on the east side, finding a good camping spot is not really that much of a big deal um, because typically about 20 minutes of paddling you can land almost anywhere on the east coast. On the west coast, on the other hand, a person can go for hours before there is any safe place to land. Uh, this is also dependent on weather because sometimes there are spots with um, straight up rock cliffs. This is a great shot of that. And any big swells coming in, you get dashed to pieces. So it is really important that you make sure you know your next camp and the camp after that. You should just wing it. Uh, one of our favorite spots to camp was Puffin Cove, which is on the west coast of Moresby Island. It is inside Guayanas National Park Reserve. It is not only beautiful, but when we pulled into the beach, 
the fog lifted and it was the first time we saw the sun truly in six days. So that was kind of a big deal. Uh, another camp that really stuck in our mind was a small unnamed beach, which we afterwards informally named Maybe Cove. This is us sleeping in the logs at Maybe Cove Maybe right Cove. now. Um, I've uh, camped at over 30 uh, sites on the west coast of Moresby, and I have two favorite spots, so I wanted to share them uh, with you. And one is Gothendite La Gopdel, which is right there, and that in Haida means Good Spirit Bay. And of the three, uh, three of the four trips that we've done, uh, that I've done down here, uh, this beach was uh, get off the water bay for me. We had to get to that bay because we didn't want to be on the water. And I often tease to my family and friends uh, that know me well that uh, if things go terribly, terribly wrong with the world, that's where I will be kayaking to. That is my slice of heaven. And I actually have a rock in my, uh, my, my kitchen on the, the the windowsill that is my transporter to that place. I have little transporters all over, and so I can wash dishes and go to Gothendite Law Bay often. Um, on our trip, we also had the opportunity to do some fishing, as Dad already said, and the highlight of this was when Les landed a 25-pound lingcod in his kayak. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Henry Thoreau reminds us that we are so early weaned from nature's breast to society. And so I spend my winters um, planning summer kayak trips for myself. I do solo ones and then ones with my, my wife and family and, uh, and then ones with uh, my good friends. And I, I look for these um, immersions into the natural world to fine tune my, uh, my senses and my spirituality with the, the, the earth. And Guayhanas provides this for us all, I believe. It is bountiful, it's vivid, it's bold, it's stark, it's monumental. Um, and I want to share a couple of these natural history kind of experiences with you. When we were paddling south of Tassu, <laughs> so south of Tassu, we had a, a salmon shark um, uh, surround us uh, and paddle around us to, three times, actually, and salmon sharks are close relatives of the great white. They're, this one was about nine feet long and bluish gray. And uh, they, I guess their primary source of food is salmon, so they must have teeth, we're thinking. And uh, <laughs> at first I saw this big dark thing go by the bow of the boat and I could have hit it with my paddle. And I was like, okay, I didn't see that. And then it went around. <laughs> And like a minute later, okay, there's the dorsal fin and the back fin. That's a shark, man. And you guys see it, so the rest of the boys saw it. And I heard Luke screaming behind because he was always off the back side. <laughs> it came around the third time, and then we all started, you know, um, playing the bongo drums on our kayak deck, and then it just left. I think one of the best quotes of the whole trip was, something big and black just went by my bow. <laughs> when you're half a mile offshore in fog and big seas in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty good. good and we times. also had humpback whales like every day from um, Kaisun to Tasu to Gaugaya to uh, Puffin Cove, right down to McLean Fraser to uh, uh, Cape Fanny. And Cape Fanny, when we turned the corner and we were actually in placid waters for the first time, we had a humpback show. They were just jumping all over and feeding. We just spent three or four hours just watching. It was just incredible. And then the other uh, experience just south of Puffin Cove, the next, so we had sun, we saw it, and then the next morning, of course, we woke up and it was fog again. So we're paddling along south of Puffin Cove, and we could smell something, and I went, that smells like sea lion. Then we started to hear them, and then we saw them, because we came upon them, because we couldn't see. We were just like in whiteout fog conditions. And in the, the Haida language, the word for uh, personal body odor is kaisruna, which is, means Sea lions stink. <laughs> but actually, to be fair to the sea lions, after paddling for seven days on the west coast with no bath or shower, they could probably smell us before they saw us. Yeah, they maybe. We would, if any of you are ever thinking about paddling on the west side, please give us a call. Uh, we'll have some stories from you, but we would, I, I truly mean that. I get that, I get calls from people often because they know that I spend time on the west side and I do not mind sharing uh, my knowledge uh, with you. So please do, and I give thanks to my two friends and uh, my son for fulfilling a dream to paddle at that high level uh, in such a spectacular place.